Today, we're taking a moment to remember those we've lost. People who touched our lives in ways we'll always cherish. But today we have a list of iconic stars who have left us. Legends somehow contributed their work, ended up passing away. Let's come together to honor their memory. So, in their honor, we're asking you to join us to like and subscribe this channel as a tribute to those we've lost. Let's keep their spirit alive by spreading kindness and joy. Ich bin von, von meinen Eltern. Meine Mutter hat mir alle Kleidchen genäht. Charlotte Kretschmann was a remarkable woman, known for her extraordinary longevity. Born in Germany on December 3, 1909, she lived through significant historical events, including both world wars, the rise and fall of the Berlin Wall, and the reunification of Germany. Throughout her life, Charlotte witnessed monumental changes in society, technology, and politics. She was celebrated for her sharp mind and the wisdom that came from living through such transformative times. Charlotte was not only a witness to history, but also a beloved figure within her family and community. Her life was characterized by resilience, having survived the hardships of war and the challenges of rebuilding her life in post-war Germany. She was known for her positive outlook and the importance she placed on family often sharing stories of the past with younger generations. Charlotte Kretschmann passed away on August 24, 2023, at the age of 113, making her one of the oldest people in the world at the time. Her long life was a testament to endurance, adaptability, and the strength of the human spirit. Yeah, so I would say, you know, there's cause for concern, but I do believe firmly that there'll be a diplomatic solution to this. Danelle Barrett is a retired U.S. Navy Rear Admiral who has distinguished herself as a leader in the fields of cybersecurity, information warfare, and strategic communications. She served in the Navy for over 30 years, during which she held various key positions that contributed significantly to the modernization and transformation of the Navy's digital and communication capabilities. Barrett was known for her expertise in cyber operations and her efforts to advance the Navy's information dominance. She played a critical role in integrating new technologies and strategies to enhance the Navy's effectiveness in the digital domain. Her leadership was instrumental in shaping policies and practices that ensured the security and efficiency of Navy operations in an increasingly complex cyber landscape. After her military service, Danelle Barrett transitioned into a career as an author, consultant, and speaker, focusing on leadership, cybersecurity, and digital transformation. She has been recognized for her contributions to the field and continues to influence the future of technology and security through her work and thought leadership. Barrett is also an advocate for mentoring and empowering the next generation of leaders, particularly in the areas of technology and cybersecurity. Her career and post-military endeavors underscore her commitment to innovation, leadership, and service. Happy Trom, born on May 9, 1938, in the United States, was a prominent American folk musician. He began playing music around Washington Square in the late 1950s, and became a significant figure in the Greenwich Village music scene during the 1960s. He later became a key part of the Woodstock music community in the 1970s and 1980s. In late 1962, Trom recorded his first album alongside other young folk musicians, including Bob Dylan, Phil Ox, Pete Seeger, Peter Lafarge, and the Freedom Singers. This album, titled Broadside Ballads, Vol. 1, was released shortly afterward. In early 1963, with his group The New World Singers, he recorded the first released version of Blowing in the Wind. He also sang a duet with Bob Dylan, who used the alias Blind Boy Grunt on the anti-war song Let Me Die in My Footstep. These recordings were re-released in August 2000 by Smithsonian Folkways as part of a collection titled The Best of Broadside, 1962-1988, Anthems from the American Underground. Later that year, The New World Singers, which included Trom, Bob Cohen, and Gil Turner, recorded an album for Atlantic Records with liner notes by Dylan. This album featured the first recording of Dylan's song, Don't Think Twice, It's All Right. Trom was influenced by Brownie McGee, from whom he learned to play blues guitar, shaping his unique style. 
He was also known as one half of the duo Happy and Artie Trom, formed with his brother. Together, they released several albums, including Happy and Artie Trom, 1969, Double Back, 1971, and Hard Times in the Country, 1975. Trom also pursued a solo career and founded Homespun Music Instruction, a company dedicated to teaching music. Happy Trom passed away at the age of 86, after a brief illness. Bernie Marsden, the renowned rock and blues guitarist who gained fame with the band Whitesnake in the 1970s and 80s, passed away on August 24, the age of 72. Marsden joined Whitesnake in 1978, shortly after the band was formed, and co-wrote several of their hits, including Here I Go Again, She's a Woman, and Fool for Your Loving. After leaving the band in 1981, he pursued a solo career and formed other groups, such as Alaska and MGM. Native of Buckingham, England, Marsden was also known for his impressive guitar collection. His 2018 book, Tales of Tone and Volume, showcases what his website describes as one of the most unique and expansive private guitar collections in the world. In recognition of his influence, Gibson Guitars released a limited edition Gibson Les Paul solid body electric guitar called The Beast in his honor. And that is the issue of settlements. Not because he thinks there needs to be a settlement. Martin Indek, born on July 1, 1951, was a prominent American diplomat and Middle East expert. He spent much of his career at the Brookings Institution in Washington, D.C., where he served as a fellow in international diplomacy and later as executive vice president from 2001 to 2018. During his time at Brookings, he took a break to serve as the U.S. Special Envoy for Israeli-Palestinian negotiations from 2013 to 2014. Later, he became a distinguished fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. Indic was appointed U.S. Ambassador to Israel twice and served as the Assistant Secretary of State for Near East Affairs during the Clinton administration. His career began in 1982, when he joined the American Israel Public Affairs Committee as a Deputy Research Director. In 1985, he became the founding Executive Director of the Washington Institute for Near East Policy focusing on Middle East policy analysis. In addition to his diplomatic work, Indic taught Israeli politics and foreign policy as an adjunct professor at the Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies, and he also taught at Columbia University, Tel Aviv University, and Macquarie University in Australia. He wrote extensively on U.S. policy in the Arab-Israeli peace process, U.S.-Israeli relations, and the challenges to Middle East stability posed by Iraq and Iran. Indic also served as a special assistant to President Bill Clinton and as senior director of Near East and South Asian Affairs at the U.S. National Security Council. He passed away at the age of 73 due to a heart attack. Faye Fantaro, a rising singer-songwriter from the UK, passed away at the age of 21 on August 26 after battling a rare glioma brain tumor. Fantero had previously overcome leukemia twice. Earlier this year, she released her debut EP AWOL with the help of her mentor and producer, Dave Stewart of Eurythmic. The news of her passing was shared by her mother on Twitter. Fantero had been recognized as a promising talent by BBC Introducing and won the Alan Hall Songwriting Award in 2021. According to her publicists, she had raised funds to undergo experimental treatment in California but was only able to complete one round before becoming too ill to return to the U.S. The remaining funds were donated to charity for medical research. Nicholas Van de Waal, born on June 25, 1957, was an American political scientist specializing in comparative politics. He was a professor at Cornell University from 2004, where he held the title of Maxwell M. Upson, Professor of Government. From January 2004 to June 2008, he served as the director of the Mario Einaudi Center for International Studies. Before his time at Cornell, Van de Walla taught at Michigan State University and worked with the World Bank and the United Nations Development Program. In 2005, he became the Associate Dean for International Studies at Cornell. He also contributed to foreign affairs by writing the Africa Book Review section 
starting with the May-June 2004 issue. Nicholas van de Waal passed away at the age of 67 from natural causes. Jerzy Artysz, born on November 18, 1930, in Poland, was a renowned Polish baritone and academic teacher. He performed with the Grand Theatre in Warsaw and had a successful international career, singing in Europe, Israel, Canada, and the United States. Artish was known for his leading roles in early Baroque operas and for premiering roles in works by composer Josep Soler. Starting in the 1970s, he shifted his focus to teaching, working in both Barcelona and Warsaw. He served as the artistic director of the Opera Studio in Barcelona from 1990 to 1994 and was a professor at the Warsaw Music Academy. Artish also participated in oratorio classes and acted as a juror at various music competitions. Throughout his career, he received several prestigious awards, including a prize from the Polish Composers Association in 1980, the Gloria Artist Medal in 1981, and the title of Officer of the Order of Polonia Restituta. For his 70th birthday, the Chopin University of Music honored him with a gala concert, and in 2004, he was awarded the Orpheus Award for his performance. Jersey Artish passed away at the age of 93 after a brief illness. Pascal Donnell, born on March 31, 1944, in France, was a well known French pop singer and composer. He began his singing career in 1962, and after a couple of minor hits, he found major success with the song La Plage au Romantique, which became a number one hit in France and other European countries in 1966. The following year, he gained international fame with Kilimanjaro, another number one hit that was recorded in six languages. This song became one of the biggest French hits of the decade, covered over 180 times by various artists. Danel recorded many of his songs in French, Italian, Spanish, and Japanese, and toured internationally. In 1972, he placed third in the Rose d'Or d'Antibes Song Festival. He continued to produce hits, including the number one song, Commune en Femme, and several other top ten hits throughout the late 1960s and 1970. In 1979, La Plage aux Romantiques became a top five hit once again. Danel continued to tour, releasing live albums and new songs. In the mid-1980s, he found success as a TV producer and returned to the music charts in 1989 with a compilation produced by his son Jean-Pierre, earning another gold disc. His final album of new material was released in 2000. From 2007, 2009, Danelle participated in a major nostalgic tour with other 1960s icons performing sold-out concerts across France. The tour sold 1,750,000 tickets. Pascal Donnell passed away at the age of 80 after suffering a stroke. Rosa Regas, born on November 11, 1933, in Barcelona, Spain, was a distinguished Spanish writer and novelist. She received notable awards such as the Premio Planeta de Novela and the Premio Nadal. During the Spanish Civil War, Regas was exiled to France but returned to Barcelona after the war ended. She attended a religious boarding school and later earned a degree in philosophy from the University of Barcelona, where she met several Spanish poets. In 1983, Regas sold her publishing house to concentrate on writing and worked part-time as a translator and editor for the United Nations. Her debut novel, Memoria de Almator, was published in 1991. She gained widespread recognition with her award-winning novel Azu, in 1994, she continued to write successful novels, including La Canción de Dorotea, which won the Premio Planeta in 2001. From the early 1990s, Regas also wrote articles for newspapers and magazines and was active in human rights movements. She served as the director of the Ateneo Americano and the Spanish National Library. Rosa Regas passed away at the age of 90 from natural causes. Phil Donahue, the iconic daytime talk show host, passed away on August 18 at the age of 88. Known as the king of daytime talk, Donahue was a pioneering figure in television for his influential program, The Phil Donahue Show, which aired from 1967 to 1996. 
His show was groundbreaking because it focused on a single guest or topic for the entire hour with active audience participation. For his debut episode, Donahue featured atheist activist Madeline Murray O'Hare, known for her efforts to remove prayer from public schools, a choice that sparked significant discussion and controversy. Throughout his 29-year run, Donahue addressed a wide range of sensitive and controversial issues that other talk shows of the time avoided, such as incest, abortion, and homosexuality. He interviewed a diverse array of guests, including feminists, Ku Klux Klan members, world leaders, politicians, and adult film stars. The show was particularly noted for its focus on women's issues and was praised for providing a platform where women could discuss topics that were often overlooked in mainstream media. Donahue himself remarked in a 2002 interview with Oprah for O Magazine, the show became a place where women discussed issues that didn't naturally come up, and certainly not in mixed company. Much of what we talked about on the air is what women had been talking about in ladies' rooms. Throughout his career, Donahue earned nine Daytime Emmy Awards and received 21 nominations, as well as a Primetime Emmy for his special Donahue and Kids. In 1981, he was also honored with a Peabody Award. Maurice Williams, the lead singer of the doo-wop group The Zodiacs and the songwriter behind their 1960 hit, Stay passed away on August 6 at the age of 86. Born on April 26, 1938, in Lancaster, South Carolina, Williams began performing in church at the age of six and formed his first group, the Royal Charms, during high school. The group went through several name changes and reformation before becoming Maurice Williams and the Zodiacs. Their first hit came in 1957 with Little Darlin, but it was their 1960 song, Stay, that secured their place in music history. The track topped the Billboard Hot 100, becoming the shortest song ever to achieve that feat at just 1 minute and 32 seconds. Day was later featured in the 1987 film Dirty Dancing, starring Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey, and has been covered by numerous artists including The Hollies, Four Seasons, Jackson Brown, Bruce Springsteen, and Tom Petty. After the success of Stay, the group continued to enjoy popularity with their 1961 hit, May I, and continued to tour and record music until 2000. Williams is survived by his wife, Emily. Well, I invited community leaders to my house for a coffee. Ruth Johnson Colvin, born on December 16, 1916, in Chicago, Illinois, was a prominent American literacy advocate and educator. She is best known for founding Literacy Volunteers of America, LVA, in 1962, an organization dedicated to fighting illiteracy through volunteer-led tutoring programs. Colvin was inspired to start LVA after discovering the high illiteracy rates in her adopted hometown of Syracuse, New York. Her work has educated millions of adults and led to the creation of literacy programs both across the United States and internationally. Colvin authored several books and educational resources on literacy and adult education, making a significant impact in the field. Her contributions were recognized with numerous awards, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2006, one of the highest civilian honors in the U.S. Even into her 90s, Colvin remained active in literacy advocacy, reflecting her lifelong dedication to education and community service. Her legacy is marked by her tireless efforts to transform lives by providing the crucial skill of literacy. George Latimer, born on June 23, 1935, in Iowa, is a notable American politician and civic leader, renowned for his role as the mayor of St. Paul, Minnesota, from 1976 to 1990. As a member of the Democratic Farmer Labor Party, Latimer was instrumental in revitalizing the city during a time of economic difficulty. His administration concentrated on urban renewal, economic development, and enhancing housing, particularly for low-income residents. Under his leadership, St. Paul saw significant improvements, with numerous infrastructure projects and business developments that helped boost the city's economy. Latimer was known for his ability to build consensus and unite various groups to tackle the city's challenges. After his tenure as mayor, he continued his public service career in different capacities. 
including serving as a special advisor to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Latimer is remembered for his commitment to enhancing urban communities and his lasting impact on St. Paul's development during his 14 years in office. Dale Hunnicutt, the actress best known for her role as Vanessa Beaumont on Dallas, has passed away at the age of 80. Born in Fort Worth, Texas, Hunnicutt joined Dallas during its final three seasons where she played the mother of J.R. Ewing's illegitimate son. Her acting career began over 20 years earlier with roles in shows like Mr. Roberts, Get Smart, The Beverly Hillbillies, and Hey Landlord. After marrying British actor David Hemmings, she moved to the UK and became well known for her work in films and television, including horror movies such as Fragment of Fear, Voices, and The Legend of Hell House. Before her role on Dallas, Hunnicutt also appeared on popular 1980s shows like The Love Boat, Taxi, Fantasy Island, and The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. This is CNN Breaking News. Michael Douglas is an acclaimed American actor and producer, known for his extensive career in Hollywood that spans over five decades. Born on September 25, 1944, in New Brunswick, New Jersey, he is the son of legendary actor Kirk Douglas. Michael Douglas rose to prominence in the 1970s with his role in the TV series The Streets of San Francisco and went on to achieve major success in films such as Wall Street 1987, for which he won an Academy Award for Best Actor, Fatal Attraction 1987, and Basic Instinct 1992. He has also produced significant films including One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, 1975, which won the Oscar for Best Picture, Douglas's career has been marked by a wide range of roles that showcase his versatility, from intense dramas to thrillers and comedies. He is also known for his work as a producer and his efforts to continue his father's legacy in the film industry. In terms of health, Michael Douglas made headlines in 2010 when he revealed that he had been diagnosed with stage 4 throat cancer, which was later clarified to be tongue cancer. His public battle with the disease drew significant attention as he underwent chemotherapy and radiation treatment. Douglas announced in 2011 that his cancer was in remission, though he continues to monitor his health closely. As of recent years, Douglas remains active in the entertainment industry, both in acting and producing. He has also become a vocal advocate for cancer awareness, using his experience to raise awareness about the importance of early detection and treatment. Despite his past health challenges, Douglas has shown resilience and continues to work on various film and television projects, maintaining his status as a respected figure in Hollywood. Thank you for joining us on episode of Fame Story TV, where we remember and pay tribute to the lives and stories of remarkable people who have left us today. If this video touched your heart, please consider honoring their memory by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. See you in the next episode.